I'm Julie. Welcome to the Paleo Zuzium. Um, this is my first creature feature with a couple of my pets. Um, so creature features are going to be quick little things about my animals. And today is about my two hingeback tortoises. Um, so these guys, we believe, are Holmes hingeback tortoises. In the wild, they are endangered, uh, but they are in the pet trade. Um, mostly wild caught. There hasn't been a ton of breeding programs. Um, I found one really sad at a reptile show. Normally, I don't want to support really sad, bad vendors at reptile shows, but like, I love tortoises and I felt really bad for it, so I got one. And that was this one right here. Um, so this is a female. And then, weirdly enough, uh, a week later, um, after that reptile show, uh, my husband uh, got the second one uh, because someone came into his business, said, hey, you know tortoises, right? and handed him a box, uh, which they thought was a sulcata tortoise, and it wound up being a second hingeback tortoise. Um, you can't make this up in my house, but we thought that was super odd, so we're guessing that the other one probably also came from that sketchy um, vendor at, the, at that reptile show. Um, so anyway, so we have two. Um, cool enough is the other one wound up being male, so they have been doing some fun stuff. Um, if that would be the case and they make some eggs, we would be one of the main breeders in the United States of these guys. So hopefully uh, that works out for us. We're going to have to do a lot of research on tortoise babies um, because we haven't bred tortoises before. Uh, but they have been doing the dirty, so that is exciting for us. So my tortoises are, wait for it, so these hitchback tortoises, this is Nickelback, um, the female. And then this is... Brokeback, the male. So these guys are kind of weird tortoises. Um, normally when you when you get a tortoise, they're like, eat the leafy greens, eat some hay. Um, so while we offer that, they actually eat, and I'll show you the thing. They actually eat insects um, and also fungi, so you can feed them mushrooms. But we have some uh, can of grasshoppers here and some mealworms. And then I also use Missouri tortoise pellets um, as well as Zoo Med Forest tortoise pellets. And then I do offer greens just because you know, that's pretty healthy for them too. It's just not part of their main diet. These guys, for some reason, really like fruit. Um, and you can tell that the one place that we got the first one was sketchy because they told us that they were fruit horses. Um, they are not. They are actually more insectivorous um, than anything. But they are omnivores. They eat a little bit of everything. So we give them a little plate of everything. Um, they also are a more humid tortoise. Um, so we have a nice fog around, if you can see the fog or fog right here, uh, to keep their humidity up in their enclosure. Um, so they like it actually kind of dark. We took away some of our dark features just for this video, but you know, like they usually have shade covering because they're a forest tortoise. Um, so they have lots of houses um, covering. They still offer obviously UV and UVB. Um, we use a mercury bulb for that um, since mercury bulbs are, are high powered and they offer both UVA and UVB. So these guys are originally from West Africa. Um, they live in tropical swamps and lowland forests. Um, so as I said earlier, they do like shaded places, but they are diurnal, so they're still active during the day, which is pretty cool. The exciting world of tortoises. So they, like most tortoises, live a long life. Um, not quite as long as some of the things like sulcatas, but they live 25 to 60 plus years, so hopefully we'll have these two for a really long time. Um, luckily we have a male and female pair because males are highly territorial and they will try to kill each other. Um, so we kind of lucked out with our random pairing of a parking lot tortoise and a show tortoise. They're pretty neat. We had to build a pretty big enclosure for them just because, you know, they're a decent sized tortoise. They only get around 11 inches, um, which is not huge, but not tiny either. So I can be easily spread out and lay and have plenty of room to move around um, and they could just crawl over me if I wanted to. I don't do that, but you know, I could just sit in here and hang with my, my tortoises if I wanted. So hinge back tortoises, obviously I have a hinge on their backs. So the hinge right there allows their carapace, which is the top part of their shell, and the plastron to close together to protect their legs and tail from predators. Uh, what's interesting about these guys is there's actually the carapace, so the top part that moves, um, not the plastron, which most other uh, turtles and other tortoises that do have a hinge, um, that's the part that moves the plastron, where these guys is the top portion. So Holmes hingeback tortoises are actually more different than other hingeback tortoises based on the shape of their shell. If you look at the end of the shell, so on this, this end, 
um, you'll see that this forms a 90 degree angle. Other hingeback sources are more sloping and not as severe of an angle. So these tortoises do have sexual dimorphism. The females tend to be bigger than the males and the males have longer, thicker tails. Um, of course, you have got to be hard pressed to find their tails because they can just close their hinge and you'll never know. They're presenting. Look at that tail. Tail's wagging. There you go, the elusive Kind of short, fat tail. Males also tend to have a more colorful head, uh, while females have a more plain head. Another difference is the underside of the shell. So females are going to have a more rounded end of the carapace, so the bottom portion. Um, they're also going to have a flatter plastron. Older females can have a little bit of a concave plastron. Uh, so this one might be a little bit older, um, but it is still pretty flat. Um, if you notice, the bottom part of the plastron is actually a little bit more rounded too. Um, it allows for fun tortoise sexy time. Get a humper. I'm just mad the perfect strawberry is gone. And then for males, the bottom tends to be more ornate. Um, the carapace is more pointed, and then that bottom part of that plastron is also more pointed. It's concave uh, rather than flat, so it's kind of easy to see like that. So that is the story of how I got my two hingeback tortoises. One that from a sad vendor at a reptile show and the other abandoned in the parking lot uh, near my husband's work. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed my video on hingeback tortoises. Hope to see you soon. the best piece. These are my two Holmes hinge back towards stop leaving. Why do you keep leaving? <laughs> You're gonna edit a lot of this, right? Waiting for that accidental bite. Oh, come on. Go back to the juicy part. Oh, screw you, bug. I want this fruit. <laughs>